Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I do hope you're staying well and uh, staying safe and healthy out there. And um, let's see, if you're new here, I'm Jim. I appreciate you swinging by today. Uh, I make tutorial videos about editing or post-processing your photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar 4. I'm working on a landscape and showing some enhancements uh, that I typically make. This is not everything that I would do. Obviously that may vary based on photo to photo to photo. You know, things do differ, but these are some common things that I do on a landscape. So I thought I'd walk through this landscape enhancement. Let me show you the photo. Here it is. This is from Moraine Lake in uh, uh, Banff National Park in Canada. It's absolutely stunning and beautiful. That's my base photo. And then after enhancement, this is my uh, final photo. Now, it was a sunset, so I brought back some of the colors. I warmed up the photo. And uh, also, as you can see from a... Uh, lens and geometry standpoint, which is a canvas tool. I can show you right over here. You have lens and geometry. But um, in lens and geometry, I was able to uh, basically correct some of the distortion because this was shot with a wide angle lens. So one more time, there's my base photo and there's my current state. Let me reset these filters. And I'll walk through this workflow right now. Okay, so once again, here's the base photo. Here's the current state. I've already applied the lens and geometry which was, as I said, just a bit of distortion correction, primarily because of the wide angle lens, that tree is kind of tilting inward, and I wanted to straighten that out, and I think I like the way it is there. So I start in light tool, which is very common. I start just about every photo, not everyone, but you know, a high 90% of them, I start in the light tool. And uh, here, a little bit of temperature and tint, some smart contrast, took down the highlights, bumped up the shadows, and did a tiny bit in the curves tool as well. Uh, I took down whites, and then over here on the tone curve, I just bumped up those mid-tones a little bit. So as you can see, here's the before, and there's the after for light. Now, it's fairly flat. All the color is gone, and in fact, um, it was fairly colorful. It was actually a beautiful sunset. I got some wonderful shots that evening, uh, but you can't really tell here, um, and you still can't tell, but we're going to get to that. So uh, next up was AI Enhance, and I went pretty high there. The AI Accent, I went to 60 and that's really just bumping up the visibility in the foreground. So let me turn that off again. There's the before and the after. Um, it does a great job, I think, of kind of acting like a light uh, distributor uh, or redistributor, I should say. If I turn that off one more time, you'll see that the uh, foreground obviously is a little bit darker. The sky is brighter and it's basically different now. Notice the difference in the blue in the sky. There it is now before, I should say and after, and I didn't even touch the Sky Enhancer, so AI Accent is doing all of that. If I add Sky Enhancer, that will darken it further. I don't really think I need that or want to do that here, but it's something to be aware of. But I just wanted to point out AI Accent, it really is like an easy button. It does a whole lot of stuff, so that's both good and something you need to be aware of when editing, because if you drag that a really far, you're gonna impact a lot of different aspects of the photo, which could interfere with things you wanna do with subsequent tools. Okay, believe it or not, I didn't even use the color uh, tool here. I did go into details, and I bumped up small, medium, and large, more so the medium, and then I just went in and brushed them into the rocks. Here's uh, uh, the mask, you can kind of see that. Basically, just bringing up some of the details to make it a little bit crunchier, and uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's a landscape. I expect the rocks to be kind of crunchy, especially stuff like this, which is just a massive rock pile, and then these rocks in the foreground. I just want them to have a little bit more texture. So Detail Enhancer comes in great there, especially when you add the masking and customize where it applies in the photo. Next up was Landscape Enhancer, and that was purely for golden hour. And you can see what that's done there. It's not massive, but it gives it a nice little pop of warmth. I did apply that across the entire photo. Keep in mind, sometimes it may make sense to use the edit mask function with golden hour and just paint it into certain areas of the photo. But for me, it kind of worked here applying it globally, so I went ahead and went with it. Next, I popped over to the Creative tab, and I used Mystical. And um, that is basically... In some ways, it runs counter to what I did with the detail slider because it kind of softens things up. It gives a little bit of shadow and a little bit of, um, I don't know, I call it that romantic glow. Um, I like that a lot on landscapes. I think you have to be careful because you can do this kind of stuff and you know you really start to kind of um, get too contrasty and kind of too, um, you know, too moody, I guess. Um, I can't remember where I was. I'm going to say 35. Now, I'll often 
use uh, Orton with it, but in this case, I did not use Orton. Um, it adds, I think, in some way to the landscape. However, um, for this one, um, I didn't feel like it did a lot. I think if it was lower light, um, a more stunning sunset with a little bit more contrast in the image, I think Orton effect would have worked here, but I decided not to use it, so I left that one off, even though I'll often use it in tandem with Mystical. Okay, so, so far, three tabs. We've gone from there to there. And you'll notice, especially in um, most of my videos, not all of them, but in most of them, I kind of go through the tabs in order. Um, at first, when I got Luminar 4, like everybody else, I was like, where's this and where's that and where's my stuff? I had my stuff in the right place and that's my stuff. Quit messing with it, right? Um, but truthfully, after a little while, I got really used to the flow here and I'm, I'm quite a fan of the way the tools are organized. You may or may not agree, that's okay. Um, but there's a reason that I kind of flow through these in order, and it's just because I like the flow of it. I think it kind of makes sense. Do I bounce around sometimes? Yes. Do I just use the tools on a certain tab sometimes? Yes. But generally speaking, I flow through them in order. Having said that, let's pop over to the Pro tab and get into some of these. Now, believe it or not, I skipped Advanced Contrast, Adjustable Gradient, and Dodge and Burn, and I love all three of those, but I didn't really feel like I needed them on this photo. I did go straight to Color Enhancer, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. You can see here that I used a little bit of Brilliance and Warmth, uh, and that was really it. I didn't do anything down here in Color uh, Balance, so it was a very simple and straightforward use of Color Enhancer, but I feel like it got me what I wanted. Again, it's a sunset, as you can kind of clearly see, so I'm going for a little bit more warmth, a little bit more brilliance. I just don't wanna overdo it. I'm trying, um, trying real hard uh, not to oversaturate because I do like my colors a lot, but I'm trying to keep it um, more traditional, I guess, is a way of looking at it. Okay, and next up was something that's a bit non-traditional, and that is Photo Filter. And I talked about this in a recent video, but it works really well on sunsets. You just pick kind of a warm color. I picked a hue of 10, which is kind of in the reddish orange, uh, and amount of 10, which is really very low. Saturation of 85, I actually pulled that back from 100 and I applied a luminosity mask. So it's primarily applying in the highlights, um, which is gonna be primarily in the sky. Um, and then I actually went in and adjusted the luminosity mask and erased it from the water because I don't want any of that red in the water. If you've seen Moraine Lake, which is where this is, it's really blue. It's glacial uh, runoff that runs into the lake and all the minerals make it really blue. It is a crazy, crazy blue color stunningly gorgeous it almost doesn't look real but it is um and while um that's what the lake looks like running water is not necessarily going to look like that but it's still i didn't want the reddish orange hue of sunset falling into my uh water that's escaping the lake here so i wanted to um basically remove that so i masked that out but here's photo filter and now i could take this up a little bit if i wanted to and you can kind of see what that's doing right so i'm going to keep it at about 10 uh, but I felt like that worked pretty well for me there. Uh, and then I came back with split toning. And this was my final step. And basically all I did was I wanted a little bit more blue in the water. So I took the highlights into the blue and gave it a saturation of about 20. Uh, and then I painted it into the water. I didn't want to impact the highlights in the sky. I want to keep those a little bit in the orange realm. And I wanted this split toning to add a little bit of blue back to this water which is, as I said a moment ago, kind of to me reflective, no pun intended, of kind of how the lake looks. So it, it again, it's very minor. That's the before and that's the after. I'm not even sure how well you can tell. I could bump up the saturation to really uh, drive that point home. Um, something like that, which, you know, it kind of looks kind of cool. In fact, I, I might actually leave it like that, maybe pull it back a little bit to maybe 50 or something. But bottom line is I wanted the blue coming out of the lake to kind of mirror the blue that's in the lake, even though, like I said, in reality, you're probably not gonna see that blue color there because it's not as deep and that sort of thing. So maybe I'll pull it back a little bit, maybe to 40, but that's really the workflow. I mean, I hit a few key filters. I'm gonna go back, light, AI enhanced, details, and then golden hour here. Uh, mystical, to me, it's a little bit of a wild card. Um, let me show you without mystical. It looks like that. And then with mystical, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more shadowy. Uh, and in fact, I might actually pull that up a little bit. Again, it depends on the mood you're going for. Um, I wanted a little bit of detail in this photo, but I kind of like it now that I'm going back with Mystical and increasing it. I kind of like how it softens that up. So um, 
you are learning that I'm very indecisive. If you haven't figured that out already, I do a lot of things where I'm making one edit and then I come back later and kind of do something that runs counter to what I did earlier. Um, I'm undecided, honestly. Um, and I think that's fine, right? There's nothing wrong with changing your mind. And that's part of the beauty of Luminar is your edits are saved here and you don't have to worry about it. So um, just go make adjustments as you see fit. Um, anyway, those were uh, some of the key things that I did. And then of course on the Pro tab, it was really all about color because to me, these first three are about contrast and light primarily. And I felt like with what I did on the first tab in Essentials with AI and Enhance, especially, um, I didn't need to worry about light a whole lot. So I primarily focused on color here. If you think about this Pro tab, it's contrast and light, and there's some color and stuff in here and light as well. Um, and then uh, Dodge and Burn is pretty much all about light. Obviously, the opposite of light would be kind of the dark or the shadows. So I mean kind of both when I say light, lightness, darkness. Um, and then the bottom three are really about color. So I was all about color here on the Pro tab today. But there's my base photo. I'm really not that uh, underexposed. Uh, and there's my final photo. And let me show you the sliding window. There we go. You can see, especially with that tree, how much it's moved. But um, I think I did a good job of kind of recovering the color, amping up the detail where I wanted it, and of course, uh, kind of enhancing the color of sunset to give it a little bit more pop. That's a sample workflow about how I enhance landscapes. Again, every photo is different, so I would possibly come back with adjustable gradient or dodge and burn or advanced contrast or even Orton, whatever else on other photos. But this is a good uh, sample of kind of things that I do and think about. One more time, there's before and there's after. And that is it, my friends. That is my full workflow for this one. So thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't yet. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be back really soon with more stuff. Hope you're having a great day and staying safe. Take care. Thank you for coming by. See you later and adios.